Hi, I'm Joe, and I have a unique perspective on the recent NVIDIA launch. I'm someone who spends 40 hours a week immersed in artificial intelligence research with accelerated computing. And what I'm seeing is that it hasn't yet dawned on technology researchers just how much the situation is fundamentally changing with the introduction of the GeForce 30 series cards and their AMD counterparts debuting in next-gen consoles. Reviewers are taking a business-as-usual approach with their benchmarks and analyses, but the truth is there is nothing they can currently include in their test suites which will demonstrate the power of the RTX 3080 relative to previous gen CPUs. Nvidia has been accused of overstating the performance improvements by cherry-picking results with RTX and DLSS turned on, but these metrics are the most representative of what's going to happen with next-gen games. In fact, I would say NVIDIA is understating the potential performance data. Don't get me wrong, most of the benchmarks being reported are valid data, but these cards were not designed with the current generation of game engines foremost in mind. NVIDIA understands what is coming with next-gen game engines, and they've actually taken a very forward-thinking approach with the MPI architecture. If I saw a competing card released tomorrow which heavily outperformed the GeForce 3080 in current gen games, I would actually have my alarm bells ringing because it would mean that the competing GPU silicon has been over allocated to serving yesterday's needs. I have a feeling that if Nvidia wasn't so concerned with prizing 1080 ties out of our cold dead hands, then they would have that they would have bothered even less with competing head to head with um, older cards and rasterization performance. When it comes to Ampere architecture to, compared to previous gen GPUs, I don't think I need to bore you with the details, but essentially they have dedicated a lot more silicon to artificial intelligence grunt. Not only that, but the design of the AI cores are much more advanced and have a lot more headroom for using more powerful, better optimized AI. Similar advancements in the server class of Ampere chips have improved artificial intelligence research performance for scientific research by up to six times in some cases. This is going to be much more important than most journalists seem to realize right now. I don't know if you've caught any of the reveal trailers for next-gen game engines like um, Unreal 5 for next-gen consoles, but it's holy grail stuff, right? Photorealistic textures and true-to-life geometric detail at higher resolutions. Trust me when I tell you that the mathematical gymnastics required to achieve that simply will not fly without silicon advancements like what you're getting on Ampere GPUs. You're going to need direct to GPU data loading like RTX IO, you're going to need modern AI hardware acceleration, and you're going to need high speed memory to keep up, especially once these next gen engines need to render graphics two feet from a PC gamer's face on our high quality monitors where compromises cannot hide. The importance of AI for PC gaming experience has been a slow burn so far, but the technology curve with AI is not linear. With the importance NVIDIA has been putting on AI, I would bet money that their AI research and development team has doubled or tripled since work began on the RTX 2080. The algorithms which are used to power techniques like RTX and DLSS are going to improve exponentially, both in performance and quality. We regularly see step changes in the power of algorithms in the artificial intelligence industry. New algorithmic optimizations by themselves can easily see a huge percentage increase of AI speed on the same hardware or quality improvements can be equally as dramatic, where for example AI, which could only generate weird like nightmarish blurry images, could quite suddenly generate photos of people who don't exist, which you would never be able to tell from a real photo. Guess what? The person you see dancing in this video can't dance. This is an AI fake. Look out for DLSS faked high resolutions as convincing as this coming to you sooner than you think. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. If you're not clear on what DLSS does, let me put it to you like this. The GPU only has to render your game at 1080p, but AI makes it display at 4K. GPUs struggle to render 4K with traditional cores, and they will struggle even more with next-gen photorealistic graphics. DLSS reduces the burden on the GPU's traditional integer and floating-point cores so they no longer have to do all the work of high-resolution rendering. 
This enables the traditional cores to produce more frames. DLSS 3.0 and beyond are coming, and unfortunately there's a very good chance it won't run on a 2080 Ti. It's going to look a lot better, so it's going to be a lot more appealing to use, and it's going to provide some much needed relief for our GPUs when it comes to running those intensive next-gen graphics. It wouldn't shock me if pretty soon we only have to render 720p to output at 4K, or maybe even 8K, and it will probably look better than real native rendering, or else algorithm advancements will improve 1080p upscaling and give 4K a huge boost when used with the photorealistic graphics of next-gen games. I really cannot overstate how big of a deal DLSS is going to be. Of course, you should take this as a speculation. This isn't based on anything actually measurable today. At the same time, it's not wild speculation. I'm basing these predictions on NVIDIA white papers and statements, and appreciation of the MP architecture based on actual experience of scientific computing with NVIDIA cores, and years of experience evolved in the evolution of artificial intelligence algorithms. And you can bet that the game developers are going to adopt these AI-driven features into next-gen games this time. Game developers now have the most mainstream audience of all, Xbox and PlayStation gamers, equipped with AI-capable hardware. This is not going to be like the release of the Turing GPU, where anyone who bought an RTX 20-something card were really just guinea pigs from, from NVIDIA's perspective. I know that's not going to be nice to hear for anyone who bought a 2080 Ti, especially recently, and I feel for you. But the reality is that RTX and DLSS 1.0 on Touring bore all the hallmarks of an AI proof of concept or prototype project. Looking at it positively, your support for NVIDIA through Touring has enabled them to push PC gaming into a new era, which will benefit all of us, including you, at least once you've recovered financially from your 2080 Ti purchase and you can afford a next gen card. No need to uh, panic just yet though, I mean the, the, the 2080 Ti still has excellent rasterizing performance, that should keep you going with great gaming experiences for a little while yet. Mass AI adoption by game developers and game engine developers is going to further accelerate the evolution of the AI techniques used on the 30 series cards. Historically, it has always been the game developers, rather than just Nvidia or AMD themselves, who have advanced graphics technology. Many game developers are creative geniuses who are driven to achieve their visionary game designs, and they have always pushed the boundaries of what's possible on accelerated hardware. Consider the likes of John Carmack, who was responsible for huge innovations in computer graphics while working for ID Software. The industry takes a collaborative approach, and these innovations will be supported from the game engine level right down to the NVIDIA drivers. This will include visual enhancements, as well as significant performance breakthroughs, um, just through mathematical tricks that are discovered along the way. DLSS is going to work hand in hand with RTX. RTX algorithms will also improve, and together they will power the next generation of games. Sure, you'll still be able to run most next gen games on a 2080 Ti, but if you try to run them with the graphical effects available on the 3080, you'll be lucky to get 25% of the performance, if you can even turn the effects on at all. What makes me think that the 2080 Ti won't be able to run DLSS 3.0? or if it can, certainly not DLSS 4.0? It's because the tricks used to make more advanced algorithms work tend to need things like TensorFlow 32 number formats or real-time neural network sparsity compression, which are only on Ampere. It's not just a matter of a 25% lower AI core will run the AI 25% slower. If the less capable cores are below a certain performance threshold, the workload simply becomes non-viable, or as, like, as we like to say in the industry, unable to compute on a practical timescale. In other words, your game would grind to a halt. Nvidia knows this, so they won't support these enhancements with the older architecture. Nvidia re-architected the Ampere tensor cores for a reason, and all new Nvidia research will be focused on maximizing the potential of the third generation tensor cores. Now I'd be remiss not to comment on the concern many industry pundits are expressing around the RTX 3080 having only 10GB of VRAM. This is nothing to worry about. Not being a graphics engine expert, I can't speak much to the actual VRAM usage statistics today, although some commentators have pointed out that observations people have made of more than 10GB being used for 4K is actually software reporting memory allocation, which is higher than real usage. 
check out the very detailed breakdown by Dark Talon, linked below, if you want to know more about things on the game engine level. The most cited supposed evidence to show that actual VRAM usage is affecting performance are some benchmarks by Hardware Unboxed showing Doom Eternal on 4K. It shows cards with only 8GB, the 2080 and the 2080 Super, being adversely affected by using a large texture pool size compared to cards with 10 plus gigabytes. However, what Steve fails to note is that the lower gigabyte cards have a lower memory bandwidth as well. This means that they're less able to cope with the throughput required to swap in the game assets which are in the player's field of view. Memory bandwidth is going to be key for next gen, especially as RTX IO enables faster texture decompression, but as you can see from this table, the 3080 has a significantly higher memory bandwidth than even the 11 gigabyte card. This is because it's using fast GDDR6X VRAM. Game engine drivers will be very much optimized for the amount of memory bandwidth available to most users. And as you can see from the PlayStation 5 specification, Unreal 5 is capable of streaming those photorealistic textures with a lot less memory bandwidth than what the 3080 has. Console games are able to be compiled in a highly optimized way since they all have exactly the same hardware, but we're talking about a 70% greater bandwidth on the 3080 compared to the PS5, and the PS5 has to share that bandwidth with its CPU. The CPU's speed is actually really important here as well because lots of real-time decisions have to be made about what can be swapped into the memory and which texture quality level to select for specific textures as the game goes along. Also remember that as DLSS improves, there'll be a limit to how high a resolution your GPU truly needs to render the textures at, so memory demands won't grow out of control. As a side note, DLSS improvements are also relevant to CPU bottlenecks, because some of the new graphical bells and whistles introduced by next-gen game engines will be partly CPU bound. With output resolutions not bottlenecking the GPU as much, thanks to DLSS, the GPU will be able to pump out these other effects at higher frame rates, but only if your CPU can keep up. I cover this in some of my previous videos on next-gen build recommendations. But anyway, today people are pulling their hair out about memory size, rasterization performance, and high resolutions. But the bottlenecks people will be worrying about in 2021 and beyond will be outdated AI cores, underpowered CPUs, and VRAM speed. You also might want to double check that your storage system will be ready for RTX IO for direct to GPU streaming of game assets. Go and watch my recent video on RTX IO if you're not sure. A quick update on that, it's sounding increasingly that RTX IO will work on PCIe 3.0 based NVMe drives, as opposed to requiring PCIe 4.0 as some fare. Please don't take that as definitive confirmation just yet, but if you're sitting on a Z390 platform with an i9-9900K worrying about PCIe 4.0 for next gen, you can probably relax for now. Anyway, watch the video for more detail. In conclusion, the AI performance curve is not the same as the traditional generational hardware gains which we've been used to up until this point. You won't see benchmarks which truly reflect the generational performance gains until halfway through this hardware cycle or even later as algorithmic improvements continue to be released. What does this mean for you, the gamer? It means that everyone is underestimating the value for money you're getting when you buy an RTX 3080. And it means we have a very exciting gear ahead.